what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Wise here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders you've heard of, some you've never heard of, um, like the founder of P90X, Tony Horton. He talked about how he made money as a street mime. Okay, that's how he'd make money, his food and rent money. He put a hat on the street, do street miming, and that's how he made money before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars of the P90X uh, program. Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark talks about growing her company to $20 million with five employees selling it to Disney. <laughs> but Ed, you'd appreciate this. You know, the most important, and um, I thought most impactful was she did this and she beat cancer twice um, while starting and running these companies. Um, Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about when Steve, he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no, imagine that, and many more. So check out inspiredinsider.com. Um, and this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And at Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners, and we help you run your podcast so it generates ROI. And for me, you know, ad podcasting is much more personal. I mean, obviously, it's the best thing I've done for my business and my life had, you know, amazing relationships, referral partners, strategic partners, but it was inspired by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor and him and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany. And they're only members of their family to survive. And his legacy lives on because the Holocaust foundation did an interview with him and uh, to tell a story and he's not alive anymore, but I could still watch that interview and I put it on my about page actually on Fired Insider to motivate me and to, it just helps them leave a legacy. So yes, podcasting helps your business, but it really helps you and your guests leave a legacy beyond um, what we can do. And so our you know, brain power doesn't vanish into the ether. So if you have questions about it, you can go to rise25.com or email us support at rise25media. Dot com And I believe any business should have a podcast, period. And I know Ed has a podcast. You'll check it out too. Um, and Ed, let me, let me just introduce Ed for a second before we chat because it's just a jack of all, you know, really a master, not jack of all crazy, a master of many trades. Um, Ed Clay is a former professional mixed martial arts fighter turned fighter of end stage cancer. Um, through the Chipsa Hospital he started in Mexico and the United Cancer Centers, um, which are in the U.S. And at one point, he was ranked as high as number nine in the world, ran one of the largest mixed martial arts schools in the United States. Um, and he would say, you know, I've heard him say he's a better coach than an actual fighter, but um, so I can't imagine how good a coach you are uh, based on that. Um, but you know, some of his students have been in the you know Ultimate Fighting Championships. His clothing brand Gameness was acquired in 2011 and was one of the largest suppliers of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu martial arts uniforms in the world. And in 2015, he partnered up with Scott Nelson and Dedrick Perry, and they acquired Chips a Hospital in Tijuana, Mexico. And they took cancer management head on. They brought conventional and alternative sides of medicine. I know people drive and fly from all over the U.S. and even world to go to their center because of the combinations of conventional alternative they bring together to attack cancer from all angles. And Ed also started United Cancer Centers, which help the sickest cancer patients around the United States and has put together a team of some of the most experienced doctors, scientists, and researchers. If you go to unitedcancercenters.com and check out the team, it's just, I don't even know how he got these people to say yes. And he's going to tell, tell me how. But uh, Ed, thanks for having me. And thanks for having, okay. yeah, for, for being with me. Thanks for uh, having me on. I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, two questions. One, what's been a low moment? challenging moment that you had to push through and then on the flip side what's been a really proud moment for you gosh what's lower. been um especially challenging time that you had to push through yeah so i mean i think when we first opened ships i mean you know uh, we all left our lives to do this so i mean in nashville 
uh, I have a great life. My home, it's called East Ivy Mansion. Um, I was, you know, I sold uh, Nashville mixed martial arts. I had sold my clothing line, just kind of hanging back and um, uh, left everything, all my friends and family in Nashville to go live in Tijuana. And getting the hospital open for those six, first six months was extremely difficult. We lived in the hospital because we want to know everything Hmm. about running a hospital every like from cleaning the toilets to properly cleaning the uh, OR room to cleaning the ICU. I mean, we were a full service hospital now with over 200 employees. Um, so, I mean, it's, uh, but, but to do that, you know, we felt like we needed to know everything and, um, you know, really the first patients, I I've seen some sad things as far as, you know, patients dying. And that really took me, you know, patients dying alone you know, with no, no, no family, family that might not even want to be with them. And so sitting with those patients at the end of their life and, you know, just trying to, in a way, express love during the end, you know, that was, I get emotional talking about that was, just, it's just so deep. People don't even realize, um, you know, uh, that impact that it can have on you, like being with somebody dying that doesn't have anybody. And then I think to myself, Oh my God, so I have them in the ICU. Let's say they, you know, they, they're not even paying. Like there's, we're making sure they stay here. They don't have friends or family. They're in the ICU. You know, how do you give them, you know, let them die with some dignity, you know, and that those were some of the hardest times for me uh, coming to terms with the importance of dying uh, with dignity and dying with people around me. If it's a, disease at the end you get a car wreck it's different but like if i'm dying i don't want to die alone um and so that had a big impact i mean it, i think it that can change you as a human being um i could probably have a whole podcast on the learnings of that actually just kind of just thinking about it bringing me back to those that moment those moments um so yeah that's those are, whenever i hear those stories of people being left by their families or whatever um, that's all that it just, it, that's, those are the hardest ones for, for me. Uh, you know, cause we really love people, you know, it's like, you know, it's, oh, it's heartbreaking. So yeah, that's that. Yeah. Um, uh, gosh, the, the best times are when we, when we get clear scans, I mean, which is all a lot, we get these clear scans from patients and, um, you know, someone comes in and, uh, you know, we see this, they come in a wheelchair, they leave walking. I mean, seeing that over and over again, those are big celebratory uh, times. Um, and it's, re it's really like knowing in those moments that you're giving people more life and more time with their family. That is, you know, that's, that's priceless you know, there as well. What was a clear scan that maybe sticks out to you? with i don't know if it was a special young person or a certain case that you thought wow that i can't believe we actually accomplished this sure yeah i would say uh, a lady named charlotte trainer um she was actually a friend of the family so anytime i have family members or friends of the family it's like you know it's a, it's, it's a little more personal obviously and so um she didn't do any low dose chemotherapy or anything she was 72 years old the doctor had given her um uh, six months to 12 months to live with high dose chemotherapy at that age, which seems crazy. And um, she came in and uh, we did some cryoablation to her original surgery site uh, with the idea that uh, she still would have tumor antigens there and those antigens would give antigen, antigen presentation to the rest of the body. So if there was cancer in other parts of the body, it would uh, theoretically eat it up. Uh, we cryoed her liver as well. She had a med on her liver. We couldn't get to the uh, spot on her lung or the spots in her lung. And um, about, uh, I guess, two months later, so it's three-week treatment, no chemotherapy at all, uh, lots of immunotherapy, Coley's, uh, VG5000, um, Apatone, uh, and two and a half, three months later, completely clear scan. And it's... Uh, it was in October two years ago, so about you know two years and four months uh, mm. ago, and she's mm. still alive today. Wow, 
Ed, I want to be the first one to thank you. Thanks for sharing this. Thanks for doing what you do. Everyone check out unitedcancercenters.com. Check out chipsahospital.org. Thanks again. Oh, thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.